a different trajectory. So many lives have been interrupted, steered in a different direction, and in some cases, halted altogether. But at the beginning of this, I couldn't help thinking of all the situations people would be missing out on. The implications of the decisions being imposed on a nation, being felt at a very individual level for so many all at once. Aside from the very sinister occurrences covered in It Looked Sinister, it was other things too that may seem quite ordinary or mundane to some. But those things shape your life and you, give you experiences which help build your character and form your personality as you get older. Once lockdown started, I really felt for people. No socialising, casual shopping, get together, parties, hanging out, moving, getting married, or meeting new people, dating, starting new jobs or travelling. So much either put on hold or has gone forever. Time does not wait though. It marched ever on as it does, and people's lives were held in place or tipped upside down. Because alongside that, ran other pressures, worries and concerns. A campaign of propaganda, coercion, fear, and a relentless drive to change people's way of thinking. A lot of strain and pressure has been put upon people by the government, local vicinity, and in many cases, their own friends, family, and colleagues. And then we really got to see peer pressure in action. In fact, they encouraged and facilitated it, allowed bullying and cajoling of people as part of the plan to wear people down and in some cases, break them. My article, Nudge Nudge, goes into that a bit more, as well as the three Ds of conversion under coercion. But really, what many seem to overlook now is their own behaviour during that and how they are now viewed. It really has revealed a starkly uncaring and nasty streak in many, where under other circumstances may not have had a chance to be exposed. But once you know, you know. And it really does, or at least should, change the way you look at someone, knowing they wanted to throw you to the wolves just to make themselves feel better. Not to actually save them or help them in any physical way, just to feel better about being duped themselves. Because that in some cases is what it highlights, that they were easily fooled, just followed orders and didn't actually use their brain. Now, that can't be said of all, some who indulged the new experimental drug did actually think it through with what they thought they knew and genuinely thought they were making the right decision because they listened to people who cared not one jot about them, overriding their own concerns or ignoring the concerns of others. Blind trust, I guess. Even people close to you can lie and take advantage of you. So why it wouldn't be considered for complete strangers and ones who stand to profit financially from your decision is beyond me. So, people are on a different trajectory from before. Things have been redirected and rearranged. Lives, destinies and paths have been altered and are being steered somewhere new. That doesn't mean you can't take control of the situation and take back some of that. But if you continue to drift along with no purpose or aim, you will get pulled along with the prevailing current, or worse, sucked under. It can't go back to how it was before. Too much has changed. Too much damage has been done for forgive and forget. I can see that. The toll it has taken on people from all sorts of angles is clear and still goes on. So there hasn't been time to try and work through it, move on from it, or work out how to move on from it. I believe that's part of the overriding plan to reshape society, throwing constant changes and variables at people, meaning you can't find your feet and stabilize to regroup as you might call it. Because if we did regroup, we would be stronger and more of a threat. That's why it serves a purpose for everyone to be at odds with each other about everything we could be. Colour, height, weight, gender, education, politics, vaccines, music, religion, media, etc. Personal preference is now used as a basis for throwing insults, excluding people and trying to show them up. A classic example of that being I really like apples. Oh, so you hate oranges then? It's an odd thing to be expected to defend yourself against that which you have no issue. Which is the issue to people who want division. It's not enough to like something. They need you to hate something to it would seem. 
and all it has done in many cases is make people stay quiet about what they like so they don't get accused of hating something else. As others, well, they are all too vocal with what they hate, constantly needing others to be aware of it. I guess it makes me wonder, what is it they actually like? Do they know? Do they understand the concept of like and acceptance and tolerance? Not so sure, yet that is what it is claimed to be. There seems to be a lot of redefining of terms these days, but that doesn't make the change so. It just writes down what someone thinks it should be. We are in a murky world of definitions at the moment, and maybe we always were, where they invent and define terminology to control, dictate, bamboozle, and ultimately gain an advantage. Then they reinvent them when the mood changes or the narrative needs a shift, swaying the collective mindset of society in the direction that gives them the upper hand. And what of that upper hand? Previously, it seemed to be for the benefit of just consumerism, or to push people's ideals and wants in a certain direction. But now it has taken a rather insidious turn, and no longer seems to be about spending and industry. It seems to be about domination and control of people's bodies, actions, thoughts and feelings. Slightly different approach from, hey, buy this, it's turned a bit into, hey, we own you, do what we say where they would like us to understand we are no longer the consumer. We are now the product, which therefore makes us the consumed. So what is it they are consuming of ours? Data, money, time, energy, thoughts, ideas, etc. We are being harvested emotionally, financially and mentally, with the final purpose of our actual bodily parts then get reused for someone else. So to me, it's a bit more in-depth and complex than just they want your data or they are trying to take everyone's assets. Because while they are, it's a much bigger sinister picture unfolding around us.